I've done a few of these on um, how to tune a uh, CB linear amplifier, but I guess some people haven't, you know, watched my old video, so I get a lot of questions. So I'm going to do another one. This one is just basically how to tune a linear amplifier. First of all, um, get yourself a watt meter. Um, of course, birds are the best, but you know, watt meters are all relative anyway. They are a uh, not a reference, but just an indication of how many watts you're doing. And it doesn't matter, you know, if a one watt meter is reading, you know, 500 watts out and the other was reading a thousand, you know, who cares? It's kind of relative anyway, right? But get yourself a watt meter um, before you do any tuning of a linear amplifier and, you know, hook it to the output. Um, and then tune for max watts. But people say, you know, how to tune and what to tune first and all that. I say, first of all, know your equipment. You know, it's your amplifier. Know what does what, you know, before you even um, um, start messing with it and keying it down. You know, know how many watts that can go in it. You know, know how many watts you expect out of it relatively and all that. Um, you know, don't overdrive it, don't kill it. But one thing about tuning though is get yourself a watt meter and always tune for max watts. Um, some people tune for maximum dead key. Uh, nothing wrong with that. I don't. I tune for maximum swing. Some people tune for um, um, RMS maximum swing. Some people tune for peak maximum swing. I'm, I'm okay for tuning for any of them. Even for max dead key. I'm not a dead key man, but actually, and this might be a little bit controversial to some people, but um, actually tuning for max dead key is probably a little bit easier on the amp than tuning for max swing. However, I think tuning for max swing, whether it's RMS or peak, uh, uh, make you sound better and it'll get you out better. So, you know, it's kind of, you know, six and one, a uh, half dozen on the other side. But anyway, tune for max on a watt meter. Know what does what. And if you know what does what, like let's take this um, 350Z for example, and it's labeled final plate band switch and by the way if your amp has a band switch for CB and you always want to be on 10 meters or 10 um, a lot of CB amps don't have a band switch because they're made for the CB band only so if you don't have one you don't have to worry about it right but if you got one put it on 10 and then you got the final plate on this one load on this one driver plate on this one okay the plate is the output of a tube if a tube has the um, cap and the um, connectors on top like many sweep tube amps do and pretty much most power tubes uh, transmitting tubes the top with that metal stuff there that's the output where the um, watt the high voltage comes in and the watts go out of the plate that's the output of a tube the grids would be kind of the drive and then the ground would be the cathode and that's basically how a tube work the um, heaters heat up the cathode and it puts out you know electrons or voltage or power and then the um, plate uh, collects that power and puts it out and you always tune for max because if you don't, if you're driving an amp and it's heated up and the filaments or the cathode is putting out that power and you don't tune to plate the plate to put out that power, those electrons or voltage or drive or watts or however you want to put it, they're staying inside the tube instead of going out and they're heating up the tube. And they're actually going to, you know, uh, overheat and weaken or destroy the tube pretty quick if you don't tune for maximum. Um, and I call it eating the watts because you got the drive, you got the uh, uh, cathode. All the watts are, you know, going into the tube and instead of going out, you know, the top where they're supposed to go, if you don't tune for maximum, 
they're staying in the tube so I say always tune for maximum never detune I'm not talking about over coupling which is correcting the signal I'm talking about people who tune their watch down using the um, plate or load uh, never do that in my opinion but anyway this is a CB amp with two driving four and it's labeled uh, final plate and the final is your final tubes your your last output tubes and the plate is the output of your final tubes sometimes that's called tune or final tune right but I guess they wouldn't put final plate tune on there. It's just too much writing. But most amps do this low, uh, name that is tune. And then over here is your load. And by the way, tune basically tunes the tubes. And the load basically tunes your antenna. And over here we got driver plate. That's the driver tubes. That tunes the driver tubes, which are going into the final tubes. <laughs> Over here we got a Black Cat JB76 and the only thing it has as far as tuning is that one tuner on the side and that's the load uh, for this amplifier. This one has a tune capacitor for the output but it's fixed. It's not variable. Um, and again since the uh, tune tubes, tunes, goodness, getting tongue tied since the tune tunes, tunes the tubes wow can't get that out of my mouth um, if you using the same set of tubes same brand of tubes like let's say GE 8417s that's all you put in here and you know GE 8417s tune it let's say 50 picofarads for the tune part of it again the tune tubes tunes the tubes then you could use a 50 picofarad fix it doesn't have to be adjustable and that's what black cat did that doesn't work for um, like uh, let's say a big amp and you change the tubes every once in a while or you might go for a different brand then you would need to vary that because different brands and and all that uh, would need different picofarads and it need to be minorly adjusted but black cat um, they say we don't need a tune cap on this. We're gonna well they have one, but it's fixed. And they tried to make it idiot proof too, because uh, you can't mistune something that's fixed and already set up right. So it's got a load cap for the output of a black hat. And the black hat also has that variable in the back. That's an input tuner. But black hat got that set up for the drive. How many watts are going into the tubes? And supposedly, when Black Cat um, made this, you set the drive, you key it down, you tune it for max, and then you set the drive in the back to set to the line. That would be your dead key. Um, and they did that because Black Cat amps were made for low dead key and high swing. And if people ran them too hard, put too much drive in them, and, you know, that dead key was too high, it'd be, you know, way over here putting it in the corner. And Black Cat, like, no, they tried to make it idiot puff. They proof they said you know just set it to the line there or actually you can go lower but don't go above that because you'll be hurting the amp but anyway black hats aren't quite normal most amps are kind of like this especially amps with driver tubes in it and when you're going to tune you get your watt meter you know key it down drive it with the correct drive and most cb amps are made for four watt drive or less three Two probably works a little better on most of them can't say for all um, but anyway um, know what your final tune is on um, this one it says final plate but that's final plate tune to be exact you would tune the tune the final tune first it's not critical that you do it first and all that but you want to you know if it's detuned um, and before that you know getting out of order if it's a CB amp, I start with all my tuners halfway, you know, up or down, going halfway, halfway, and halfway. That's a good place to start if you don't know what they're normally tuned at. A lot of people, you know, on CB amps, you'll see people mark it. Like, you know, once they get it tuned up, and let's say it tunes to right there, you'll see a little uh, mark or magic marker or, you know, piece of tape. 
indicating that's where I tune at. So, you know, if you know that, you can mark it if you want to. I don't mark my ounce, but a lot of people do that, and that's why you'll see that. But anyway, um, when you key it down and you start tuning, start with the final tune. And then when you get that, go to the final load. And then hit them a couple times quickly. Then maybe unkey, let it rest for, you know, 30 seconds or whatever. Um, and then next, go to your driver. This one only has a driver plate um, or a driver plate tuned. It doesn't have a driver load. So on this one, you would uh, then go to the um, driver, you know, tune it up for max. Whether you're doing dead key or swing. Some people do it for dead key first because it's easier to get it to dead key, which you get it close, and then they'll go back and go for the swing, but you know, to each their own. But in the order, always do your um tune first, because the tune is basically the watts going out of the tubes, and you want to get them watts going out first before you do anything else. You want them final tubes, um, them watts in them tubes there going out. And the final tune, normally labeled tune, just tune, and it's usually the big knobs on top. Um, here's another example, this um, kind of rare DNA warrior, the big knobs on top, and they're just labeled tune and load. So on this one, I would do that tune first and then do the load, but we'll get back to that. So do your tune and load in that order. Then do your driver, and if you got a driver tune and load, do both of them. Then go back and do your um, final tune and load. Go back and do the driver tune and load. And also, many amps, but not all, have an input um, SWR tuner. I say know your equipment. I can't tell you which do and which don't, all of them like that, but... Um, right there that little adjustment there on the on the bottom inside and there's a little coil that's my input swr adjustment on that put your watt meter swr meter if your radio doesn't have one if your radio has an swr meter use the swr on the rate on your radio key it down with the amp on after you get it um all tuned up with the amp running and key down and adjust that for your minimum input SWR so try to get it down to a one one to one on your input SWR if you can a lot of times it won't go that low but get it low as you can go so that would be that one and um, then you know last time hit your tune low driver and after you can't get no more max watts out of it leave it alone don't be playing with it and ingesting it all the time. Once you get it tuned up, leave it, right? It, it doesn't change overnight usually unless it rain or something and your antenna change. But basically, uh, tune, low, hit that for max. Hit your driver. If it's got a tune and a load, hit both of them. Get that going. Then go back and forth, back and forth. And you can't get no more watts uh, due to input. SWR if it has one and then go back and do them again. You can't get no more. Leave it alone um, Know your equipment the black hat only got one load That's the only thing you can adjust in the in the drive coming in in the back But then over here the reason I brought this one out is this beast here Has a uh, tune and load right there. It's got a driver tune there. It's got another tune and load here and it's got a grid tune over here. And then it's got a D1 tune it and load over here. That's a lot of tuning. Again, know your equipment. The grid, remember I said the grid is the drive. The grid is the um, watts going into the first driver. By the way, I skipped a part. This amp has four driving, four driving, eight. That's why it's got so many tuners and stuff in it. But your grid goes into the uh, first four driving tu driver tubes or the pre-drivers. So that's going to be tuned for the minimum SWR um, going in on your grid. These mark D1 tune and D1 load. 
that's your pre-driver so your first driver remember four driving four driving eight so this would be the first four and that's why it's marked D1 and that's your first four tune and load right then going back around let's go to these on top that's your final that would be the eight tubes your final tubes tune and load and over here you got driver tune and then you got another tune and load right this driver tune goes to the four mid drivers the four driving four so the four in the middle there that's what that driver tune goes to and underneath on the inside of this amp ain't that a beast right that there would be your driver load for the driver tubes for the four in the middle tubes so that would be driver tune for the middle drivers for the second drivers and that's driver load on the inside there remember I said know your equipment it's your amp uh, know your stuff so we got the uh, first four drivers tune and load over here we got the grid for the input of the first ones we got the driver tune and load over here and then we got the final for tune and load over there or the final eight so what's this driver well it doesn't say driver what's this tune and load do because we covered everything right well what happens with this dna amp here is when you're on the low power side here low power it bypasses the um final eight final tubes and it just runs off the four driving four okay and that's how it gets low power you're just using four driving four you're not using four driving four driving eight so since you're using four driving four and you connect disconnected the four uh the second set of four from going into the driver tubes i mean the final tubes and you connected them to the output the output and the tuning and loading of those tubes is going to be different so when you're on the low side and you're just off the um, second set of four tubes, that tunes that up going into the antenna and going out. That would be the tune and the low going out to the antenna for your, um, when you're on the low side of the four driver tubes. Tune and low. And then here's the, um, if you see this line here, it's going over to the relay for the output. So anyway, know your equipment, know what you're doing, tune your tune, your final tune first, final load second, I always start in the middle, then do your driver tune and driver load if it has it, and then last, after you get all that straight, do your input SWR if it has it. A lot of amps don't have all that, but if it does, you know, that's in the order you tune it. Not critical. What is critical though is always tune your, your finals for maximum watts. Whether that's dead key or, or, or swing, that's not critical which way you tune it. But as long as you tune it up so the watts are going out, um, I say never detune it down, which a lot of people do. I save my amp. I, 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 you know, it does 500 when I tune it all the way up, but I tune it down to 200. And yeah, what you're doing is uh, making those watts not go out the tubes out the plate and into the antenna where they're supposed to they're staying in and them tubes are eating those watts and that will kill an amp quicker than just about anything else so um that's gonna be it for this one strictly on tuning bye